Hello beautiful people and welcome to the channel Life After Knock. My name's Debbie and I talk about all things to do with narcissistic, abusive and toxic relationships as well as looking at healing from them. And today's video, the narcissist's first toxic incident. I'm sure many of you have experienced that. Can you remember your first toxic incident with your ex-partner, your ex-narcissistic partner? If you can, uh, comment in the description um, in the comments section below. I'd love to hear them. This is all about my first toxic incident with my ex narcissist. Before I get into the body of the video, if you enjoy it, please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel and share with your friends and family anyone who you think may benefit. So you the first toxic incident with the narcissist. You're in a relationship and you it feels perfect you are in love they love you or so they say they're buying you gifts you're going out you're dating the sex is amazing everything is wonderful but it's not perhaps you have a nagging feeling inside and we need to start listening to these nagging feelings because these are generally what tell us the truth about what's going on around us But something happens, you're gaslighted. The narcissist says something to you that doesn't sound quite right, but you brush it off because, well, they didn't mean it. That, you know, perhaps they just said it because. Do they need a reason? The narcissist doesn't need a reason, but they said something to you and it sort of hurt, but you just brushed it aside. And then they make it up to you again with the love bombing, again with the gifts, with the I'm sorry, I won't do this again. I didn't mean it. And so on and so on. But there's still this nagging part of you that's saying this isn't right. This isn't right. What, what are you what are you doing here? But you love them. They've wheedled their way into your life and you love them and, and you want to be with them. And you remember a few weeks ago when they gaslighted you and they perhaps went out with their friends and they hadn't told you about it and you couldn't get hold of them for hours. They, they weren't responding to your calls. They weren't responding to your messages. They were ghosting you. And this may have gone on for the whole day, the whole evening, and perhaps even into the next day, perhaps even for a week. And your messages become longer, become angrier, become more... Uh, full of feeling and emotion and perhaps you even go the other way and say I'm sorry I said that I you know I'm missing you what's happening what's going on it's done on purpose they are getting supply from you through this through these messages that you're sending they are getting their supply perhaps they sent you a couple of nasty or rude messages and you just brushed them off again think well you know they didn't really mean it they they love me they've told me they love me but within this, somehow they blamed you for them going out and for them not contacting you. Somehow the tables are turned. Oh, well, you shouldn't have contacted me. I was with my friends. You knew where I was. And, and they will tell you you knew where they were, even though they didn't tell you where they were or that they were going out with a friend. I mean, guys, there's nothing wrong with your partner going out with their friends or you going out with your friends. That's, you know, that is what should happen in a healthy relationship but you don't ghost that person for days on end afterwards, do you? You message them perhaps while you're out and say, really missing you, can't wait to see you again. Or you get home and you message them and you say, I'm home safe, see you tomorrow or see you in a few days time, but I'll message you in the morning. But the narcissist doesn't even do that. The narcissist completely blanks you, completely ghosts you. And I have done a video on ghosting recently and I'll put a, um, a link to that video in the description box below. But now things are getting worse. They're verbally, verbally abusing you, mentally abusing you, perhaps spiritually abusing you. There are instances where um, certain religions, certain religious people will say that they follow the word of their, um, their Bibles, their Talmud, their uh, whatever book it is. They can also be abusers. Abusers come in all shapes and sizes and races and creeds and sexes. 
Perhaps they said awful things to you, things that you don't want to remember. Perhaps they pinned you to the floor, trying to strangle you. Perhaps they tried to rape you. Perhaps you had to lock yourself in a room and ring a friend to find out what you should do. Perhaps you had to ring the police. Perhaps you even managed to get away and, and run down the street towards the police station to get away from this person. These things happen and they should be ginormous red flags for us, but they're not because we still love this person. They've got us wrapped around their little finger. They've conned us, they've indoctrinated us into their ways, into their life. And we believe that they love us. And then they apologize. And perhaps they apologize profusely, sending flowers, sending gifts, banging on the door at ridiculous times of the day or night. And your friends are telling you, listen, this, this person's no good for you, you know? This, you really are better off without them. And a part of you knows that you're better off without them. But you love them. And so you stay. And so you forgive them. And they say they'll never do it again. But guess what? They will. They always do. They will always do something similar in the future. The narcissist can't help it. It's who they are. It is their personality type. They dislike people. They only like themselves. Well, they don't even like themselves. They dislike themselves. But they try to make themselves feel better by harming others. And you probably can't believe that this happened. And it, you may even make it smaller than it actually was. So, well, you know, the person was drunk or, or they had been drinking or they were stressed or this happened, that happened. So you blame something else instead of the person. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I said something that, that set them off. We blame ourselves. It's at this point when we know deep inside that we're in the wrong place, that this person is wrong for us. But what do we do? We stay there because we love them and we think that they love us. The narcissist, as I say, is a con man or con woman. They sweet talk us. They ring you. They serenade you. They write songs or poetry for you. They do something for you that nobody else has ever done before. And you think this is so sweet. This is wonderful. You know, they're sorry for what they did. But listen carefully to the apology that they give you because they will generally say, I am sorry, but. And the but can be, you made me do this or I did this because of you or this happened or that happened. There will always be a but. They will never apologize and say, I'm sorry, I was to blame. They won't because they can never be wrong. So... Each time, it hurts worse. It is worse. Each time comes around faster. The space between each incident is shorter. Each time we blame ourselves. Well, I could have done this better. I could have done that better if I was prettier, if I had better hair, if I dressed differently, if I was a supermodel, if I was this, if I was that. Each time we believe their lies, those lies become stuck in our brain. They didn't mean it. They said they love us. They said they were sorry. And each time we forgive them and we take them back. This is a trauma bond. This is how the trauma bond starts. And I'm going to put a link to a video that I've done recently all about the trauma bond in the description box below but it's our addiction. We become addicted to them. And in the trauma bond video, you will um, see there that I've put the somatic instances that happen within the body through the trauma bond. So this is chemicals within the body that react to the love side and the fight side and how these two chemicals become addictive within our body, much like alcohol or drugs or chocolate. No one no one deserves to be treated like this. No one. Not one single person. We deserve decency, respect, civility, happiness, joy, love. 
We deserve kindness. We deserve empathy. We don't deserve to be pinned to the floor and raped. It can be so hard to move on. I know it can. You don't want to leave because you've invested so much time and energy into this relationship. Perhaps you have no money. You have nowhere else to go. Everything is in this one pot. And so what do you do? You can't go anywhere. I even considered living in my tents for a time because I thought I can't bear to stay here any longer. But I know that you can break this trauma bond. I did. And you can too. If you've enjoyed the video, please click the like button. Please subscribe to the channel and share with your friends and family. I hope to see you next time. Blessed be.